You guys, I've got this crazy idea. You're going to have to stop me before I actually do it. I've been thinking a lot, in fact, for a couple of years, about limiting the scope of my reading to about 100 books. Now, I know this is wild because we love buying books. I'm Presbyterian. Many of you are Presbyterian, too. If you're not, you probably love theology, which is why you subscribe to my channel, right? We love books. I got books behind me. I got books on my desk. I got books at home. I got books at the dinner table. I've got books near the chair. I've got books everywhere. And sometimes I feel a lot of pressure to keep up on my reading when new books are constantly coming out all the time. In fact, isn't it true that on Twitter or Facebook or some of the groups that you're looking at quotes from other people's books, what they're reading, and it makes you a little bit jealous because you're like, oh man, I want that book. I got to keep up on this. I got to keep up on that topic too. And all that's a lot of pressure, and life is really short, and that's part of the big factor here, the brevity of life and the fact that we should be reading the best books that there are, otherwise we're kind of wasting our time, which has led me to think about what if I, I limited down the scope to just 100 books. Now, maybe that's enough, maybe it's not, but let me argue just for a moment the pros and cons of actually doing this first. I could pick the best books, the best uh, of all time. That's right. I'm 46 years old. And so I've done a lot of reading, though not as much as some of you. But I think I know enough now who the main authors are in history that I'd really want to focus in on. We don't have time machines, but books are the closest thing we have to time machines. And there are certain people throughout the ages that you want to benefit from their minds. So in my view, a list of 100 books would obviously, and we're talking setting aside the Bible. The Bible's the best. Read the Bible every day, five times a day, whatever. Okay. Uh, but we're talking about guys like Augustine. We're talking about Luther. We're talking about Calvin. We're talking about Edwards. We're talking about C.S. Lewis, if you like his stuff. Wouldn't it make sense to narrow down the scope of the best books of all time so that you could really master them? I mean, that's that's the whole point, right? Not that we're constantly chasing after the new, and that's part of the problem with book lovers is that there's always a new book that's coming out, right? But rather that you would you would limit that scope so that you could really, really focus on mastery, the concept of comprehension, which is kind of the point of reading, that the things that we're reading would go into the eyes and sustain in the mind and settle down in the heart, and it would truly transform you. And I think part of the problem with readers is that we're always kind of chasing the excitement of the new, that we don't really let some of the best stuff really, really settle into the hearts that we might become really mature, vastly knowledgeable Christians. Okay, so I have now for some time been compiling a list on my phone of the best 100 books of all time, in my opinion, okay? And I've even thought about the idea of doing a series of videos in which I would discuss the 100 best books, 10 at a time. I could go 100 to 91, and then 90 to 81, and so on, all the way down to the best book of all time, again, Aside from the Bible, we all agree that the Bible is the best and we should read it as often as we possibly can, right? So what kinds of things would be on my 100 best list? Well, of course, because I'm a Christian and I'm a pastor and I'm theologically inclined, I would put a lot of theological literature on my on my list. I would, put in, I would be putting Augustine's Confessions. I would be putting Martin Luther's Bondage of the Will. I would be including several of Edwards's works, though probably not as many as you might think. I would definitely include like the religious affections and I don't know if freedom of the will would even make it. It's not my, <laughs> it's not my favorite of Edwards's works, but there'd be enough Edwards on there. But even people like Francis Schaeffer, a few of his books, <clears throat> uh, and even some contemporaries like John Frame, who's influenced me quite a little bit. I would put a hundred books together and they'd be the best and I would know them really well. Now, I would also include fiction. I'd get Moby Dick in there. I love me some dystopia. So I'd probably have like 1984 in there because I could read that again and again in Fahrenheit 451. But again, even a book like Moby Dick, you know, do you want to read it once or do you want to understand it? I mean, that's a book that could be read multiple times and at different levels, right? Truly, that is so for the best of the books of all time. And I think that if you're going to spend any time reading, it should probably be of the best caliber of books. Now, here's what I would do and here's what I wouldn't do. A little couple of rules that I'd set for myself. First of all, I would not count reference works as part of my suite of books, okay? So here's the dictionary of the Bible. I would still consult that, of course, but it wouldn't be in my 100 list because I'm going to allow myself to have reference works that I would consult all of the time. However, 
I will also cheat a little bit and that sets of books will count as one. So for instance, here's Charles Hodge's systematic theology up here, up here in green over my right shoulder. That's going to count as one for me, even though that's three volumes. Or let's take uh, Van Maastricht's wonderful work, The Practical Theoretical Theology, which is still coming out, right? It's still being translated. He's long dead, but his books are still being translated. Again, whether that ends up being seven or ten volumes, I'm going to count that as one volume, and that's going to allow me to expand. Now, I guess the counter-argument here, why this would be crazy, is two things. First, how do you know that your books are really the best books until you read them? Well, of course you couldn't, but I think we do get a sense after 40 some years of reading who the authors are, whose minds I really want to study under, so to speak. So I could do it that way. And yes, there's a lot of things that wouldn't make the list. Like I've never read anything from Solzhenitsyn and probably some of you right now are gasping that I, I haven't. And, and honestly, I've not read a lot from John Owen either. Uh, and again, a lot of you are screaming at me through the screen right now, but we have to make some selective choices whenever we're choosing our reading habits. So why not make a list of what we really think would be the best and just study those things for the rest of our lives? Well, you might say boredom would be a particular objection as well. And I don't know if boredom would really strike me in the same way um, as it might strike you, because for me, my list of 100 is already going to be several arm lengths wide, especially the fact that I'm giving myself multi-volume sets to count as one. I think it would take me a long time, even the rest of my life, to probably make it through my 100 books, much less actually read them twice or three times. Some of them I probably would, though. The other argument would be, well, what about new books? And again, that's true. Sometimes a book comes out that really speaks to the day and the age in a way that's really fresh and important. So for instance, Carl Truman's recent book that came out, I forget the name of it, Strange New World or something like that, in which he talks about how we got to this weird place that we are culturally with all kinds of sexual perversions and things like that. Sometimes a new book really demands the attention of the moment of the now. And so in that sense, I would probably allow myself to have a permeable border in which I could import a new book into the canon and then remove a book that I've kind of decided, I, I don't know if, if that's really going to be the one. So what do you think about this idea? Am I crazy? Should I do this? Should I actually limit the scope of my reading for the rest of my life to 100 of the best books? Not just any books, but the best. I think it actually might be a better form of education than just kind of randomly reading anything that happens to cross my way, especially as it's being pulled by popularity in the moment. It might be really the best thing to do is to fix that mast of your intellectual knowledge to a set of books that you know, you know are powerhouse books that have changed and shaped the world. All right, let me know if I'm crazy or if I'm crazy like a fox. Thanks for checking in. Love you lots. Talk to you later.